Oh, another day, another drama in professional cycling. Welcome back to the Lancho and Rouge YouTube channel. I thought a live stream discussion would be the most appropriate or best way to break down the Jakob Fulsang situation. We're going to go through in this video and review, or this live stream rather, and review the initial publication in the Politiken uh, Danish newspaper. We're going to review the denials by Michele Ferrari, Jakob Fulsang and pro team Astana which just happened overnight I've just read them when I've woken up this morning and we're then also going to what I'm going to add and I think do differently and really explain things to you and and well I think add more value where I see I can add value in in explaining how corporate governance and systems work uh from my legal sort of legal background explain that and how CADF works, how I think they should be interacting with the UCI, and, and where I think there's some, what's happened is really <laughs> showing some problems in the cycling institutions. So we're gonna do that as well. I'm gonna try and get on a roll here and really whip through uh, all the material initially. If you have any questions, there is Super Chat available, but otherwise I'm gonna really try and get through what Politican have said, my comments on that, and um, and then maybe answer questions periodically. So if you haven't seen, let's transition over. Welcome everyone. We've got nearly 300 strong in the live stream already. 300 strong and we started streaming six minutes ago. But I'm basically taking over YouTube right now. But if you haven't seen, this is the article that was basically dropped on everyone over the weekend. They've even got uh, Interpol <laughs> Interpol style photographs of Alexei Lutsenko on the right hand side and Jakob Fulsang. And this is in Politiken, a Danish newspaper. And what was published by the two journalists, and, and you gotta remember as well, and, and we'll say this, I'm gonna say this at the outset. There's there's levels of <laughs> levels of sources, right? So like at the highest, most uh the strongest source indicating that an athlete is doping is the police photograph of the Austrian skier Max Halker with a blood bag in his arm. So that, that's like, <laughs> take that to the bank. That's proof, right? You've then got maybe a positive test combined with photographs or association with a, a doping doctor. That's pretty, that's really strong as well. We rarely get there. We rarely get there with things like that. We then have things like uh, they they've got con like proven biological contact with doping doctors, and that's why Valverde got uh, banned for his role in Operación Puerto. And then you've got photographs taken with Jakob Fulsang and Michaela Ferrari. We've not seen them; they don't exist. According to Astana and Fulsang, they don't exist. So. That's the next tier. We haven't seen any evidence that they have any relationship at all, actual evidence. And then we've got statements from people, etc. We've got the actual, that's the next level. Then another level below is a report from CADF. We don't even have the report. There's no there's no report. And um you if you if you follow me, I spout off, I put up a Biana Reese video a couple of weeks ago that people didn't particularly like. I'm not some like reinforcer of omerta but we don't even have the report and so we've got the lowest tier of allegations right now which is excerpts from a secret report quoted <clears throat> which are quoted in an article in danish newspaper and then that's translated into english so you're gonna lose you're gonna get some lose some nuance over from danish to english so bear that in mind as well uh, I haven't seen if Alexei Lutsenko has denied um, his denial yet. I'll try and bring that up. Anyway, here's the article. So apparently the secret report got sent to Danish Danish Politik and Daily, State Television, Danish Radio, and Norwegian Daily VG. According to some of the Dan a lot of you Danish people, a lot of Danish subscribers and fans, apparently they're all maybe owned by the same entity. It's a 24 long page report, 24 page long report. I mean, all right, all right, long with documents after I've had two coffees in the morning, I probably will today. So it's not, it's not that long, 24 pages. Um, but 
Here's the quotes. I believe these are the quotes here. CADF, and if you don't know who CADF are, they're the Cycling Anti-Doping Foundation. You can see them. We're going to get to them later. We're taking our time here. We're going to make sure we cover this properly instead of just regurgitating quotes from the article in headlines trying to get cheap views. Looking at you, Cycling Media. This quote, CADF intelligence indicates that Astana Pro Team cyclist Jakob Fulsang is under Michele Ferrari's doping program. Okay, so for starters, I'm, I'm really, I'm like pretty surprised they published that because if you don't have receipts, not just to say like Cadell Evans met Ferrari once for a training, for like a training session, and pretty much most people accept that Cadell Evans, you know, most people believe that that was just a one-off training session. For them to come out and say and publish that, Fulsang is under Ferrari's doping program. And then we go further on down. CADF has provided intelligence suggesting. Here, think at, look at the language as well. CADF has provided intelligence. What is intelligence? Like a couple of people, a couple of eyewitness statements suggesting, not proving, that Ferrari continues to be involved in the doping of athletes of the Astana team. Okay. I could really, like, I, it, this is why you got to read the report. That could mean anything, really. Um, it really could mean, like, that, that could mean anything. Anyway, go to the next quote. Here it says, Mikhail, oh, and I'll get to another thing as well, and I've been speaking, I spoke a little bit to, to Estana. I'm plugged in now. Michaela Ferrari has not responded to phone calls and text messages. Okay. Apparently, CADF, like, there's been no interview or whatever of Jakob Fulsang. Like, he wasn't asked for comment. So, uh, it seems to him that he wasn't really asked for comment. So, um, you know, even if we don't know, but even if he did meet with Ferrari, what if he met with Ferrari Cadell Evans style for, like, a VO2 max test or a lactate test? Stu like, stupid for sure if he has done that. That's really dumb. But um, that's not the same as... Um, what this article is suggesting, which is that he's on a full like, Lance 2003 program. Um, anyway. Apparently, the director of Danish anti-doping Denmark, Michael Ask, has not commented, which I think that's strange as well. So Alexander Vinokurov, according to the Padova investigation, has a strong or cl very close relationship with Michele Ferrari. But I want to get to, to the end here. I want to get to the end. This is actually where the, the bits that interest me the most. Okay. So there's a secret report. They were tasked to investigate links between Jakob Fulsang and Michele Ferrari. They did. A report suggested for Cardiff to investigate further. For instance, physical surveillance of the sus suspect cycles, which suggests to me that they haven't actually done they they themselves cadf haven't investigated like done physical like i'm going to go to monaco and stake out this dude i don't think that's happened i think they're just basing this on eyewitness accounts from people that have been whistleblowing and that my favorite bit of this and I, I got i'm pretty i'm kind of cranky about this to be honest because this is not the way to go about anti-doping um leaking this shit but CADF <laughs> then their director Oliver Bernal says CADF cannot discuss its activities cannot discuss them but it is of great benefit to in the fight in the fight against anti-doping when the relevant authorities are provided with all information it's like dude if you don't want to discuss your activities how about you publish the report and don't leak it um to to Danish media so that's the politic article <clears throat> so that's the politic article and everyone took this article and was like People say Jakob Fulsang is on a full program under Ferrari is what it what it suggests. They got intelligence that it suggests that he's doping up athletes on the Astana team, including Alexei Lutsenko, um, yada yada yada. So they've taken and all the places have reshared this, etc. And I mean, we haven't seen the report. I haven't seen the report. I'd be very reluctant to be resharing stuff like that, drawing those conclusions. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty surprising to me. Anyway, so I can't find the article, but then 
This has not got as much play. DR, which is referenced up the top, which is another Danish is Danish radio. DR in but in the original Danish in, in their article, they concluded or they said in their conclusion that the report concluded that there was no actual evidence or no ability to tie Ferrari to full same. That's what the report concluded, this CATF report. I don't see that referenced in the Politican article. I don't see that referenced in all the articles that have shared this. Like, if the report, and this is where it's now starting to get interesting, if the report concluded that there was nothing they could really do against Full Sang, why has this been leaked? Anyway, so Jakob Full Sang has come out last night and says, I can test that I have met with Dr. Ferrari. I'm not aware of any report. And I confirm no procedure has even been opened by competent anti-doping authorities against me. Accordingly, I have no case to answer. I'm extremely concerned that such rumours could be spread out in the press. Now, when he says... And when he says no procedure has been opened to me by anti-doping authorities, I'm pretty sure that CADF, they are an enforcement mechanism. Oh, no, sorry. CDF are not an enforcement mechanism. CADF are contracted or they've been given a role by the UCI to perform or manage anti-doping, but it's the UCI who perform anti dis like commence anti-disciplinary, no, disciplinary action against riders, but using information from the C CADF, right? So the UCI haven't, apparently the UCI haven't even seen the report. When we go back to the end of this article, when the UCI were asked for comment, the UCI have not received a report from CADF. CADF being the organisation they basically have given the, the responsibility for providing them with doping or anti-doping information. And CADF haven't given them a copy of the report or a draft report. So that's weird. We'll get to that in a second. So yeah, nothing has been commenced against Fulsang. Full denial from him. Uh, Team Astana have a full denial as well. Um, they say that if they were in the midst of a shroud of like, a full doping program, then their UCI World Tour license wouldn't have been renewed for 2020. Um, the team's been in contact with the UCI and CADF to know more. It will collaborate with any inquiry that could be opened by CADF or the UCI. So no one's really, the UCI and CADF haven't really gone at Astana at all. Okay, and then this is the best one. This is this is good shit. So fifty three twelve is one of the best cycling websites out there. Don't at me. It's got really good information. But this is Dr. Michele Ferrari's website that he posts on or did post on pretty regularly until the end of, until twenty seventeen. Um, but he he's come back and he published this on his website saying once again I unfortunately find myself compelled to deny the latest media hoax that concerns me. The following is my reply to the secret report. Again, they call it a secret report, but they deliberately leaked it. Mentioned by the newspaper Politiken. I have not had any relationship with athletes from Astana for over 10 years. I haven't been to Monaco or Nice for at least 12 years. I've never been on a scooter in my entire life, let alone motor pacing a cyclist. Now, how can you be, how can you be Italian and never been on a scooter? Doesn't seem, that doesn't seem true to me. How can you be Italian and never been on a scooter? I haven't been to the Vuelta Catalunya in 2019. I haven't physically been present at a single race since 94. The report is based on false reports from probable interested parties. I mean, it is based on reports, eyewitness accounts from people. Uh, they say 12 people or so, reputable people, but it is based, it seems, there's no photos, there's no positive test, there's no records, otherwise I would have, t I would have mentioned it. I have no base in Lugano, a place where I've never been. I've been to Lugano. Um, and the last one's the best. I have never been convicted of doping. <laughs> I've never been convicted of doping, the beast. By the way, just quick interjection, if you want to support the channel so I can keep doing my honest breakdowns of slightly uncomfortable topics like this, consider joining channel membership or a super chat to support the channel. So Ferrari, I've never been convicted of doping, that's the best. Like The dude is the architect of the Lance Armstrong doping program. He, <laughs> But he's not an idiot either. So if we've got a Politican article, bit, bit weird, probably not as strong as uh, the headlines try to make make it out to be. And then we've got full denials from uh, Jakob Fulsang Astana and Michele Ferrari, and I believe now Alexei Lutsenko. 
So now let's get into where I think it starts to get a bit interesting. And there's a few questions that are asked. So three days ago, it was announced that the UCI were canning CEDF, canning them. The dedicated cycling unit to be responsible for anti-doping intelligence in 2021 was going to be a new contract to ITA. Although the employee, apparently the employees at CADF were going to be given the opportunity to become employees of ITA. Okay. I don't hear much about CADF. Have you heard of them before today? Seems odd that they're in the paper twice in four days. Okay, that happened three days ago that the UCI basically said, you're getting canned. And then three days later, this report gets leaked. And I had a few comments on this and I, I published, I put this on my Instagram. I immediately emailed, well not immediately, I emailed CADF. I haven't got a response from them, unfortunately. Um, I haven't got a response, but I emailed them saying, because Listen, why, let, let's, let's think about this, think about this. If you were the journalist that uncovered that Michele Ferrari was like full on had a doping program with Astana and Jakob Fulsang, not a journalist, if you were the person at CADF, would, what would you do? Would your first like port of call, the first thing you would do is like, I'm gonna do an official leak. So it's not, this isn't a leak where like someone has stolen a copy of the report and like given it to Politiken. Now, CDF have authorized the disclosure of this secret report to the media. Why would that they do that instead of going to sending it to the UCI first or publishing the report on their website? So these were the questions I had. Um, let's try and bring this up. Hold on. These are the questions I had for CADF. I said, can you confirm there's an official report? Where is the report? Are we ever gonna see it? Okay, I haven't got a response. Did CADF intentionally provide the report? Which I think they did, otherwise they would have come out and said, oh, it's just a leak. Or was it, uh, or was it a leak? Why did they think that providing excerpts of an unpublished report to a newspaper was a preferable means of airing the contents of the report rather than publishing it on their website? Three. The UCI, who is the body that authorizes you, your, like your existence, <laughs> has it received a copy of the relevant report? Why has it been given to Danish media before the UCI? Have they given it to WADA? Did CADF approach Jakob Fulsanger Astana for comment slash interview prior to providing excerpts to the Danish media? The answer to that is no, apparently. Is CADF concerned that the publication of excerpts of the report will jeopardize the application of sanctions to relevant writers. And that's the thing. Why, and this is what I think, this is, now we're gonna get to the real T, why I think this happened. If the CADF over a number of years, the last decade, has been giving information to the UCI, and that information's been going nowhere at all, and They've prepared a report, they've got a draft report, and maybe they've given the draft report to a few people at the UCI. And the UCI have come back to them and said, we're not commencing any disciplinary action on the basis of this report. And then three days before today, the UCI have announced that they're canning CADF for a contractor. So I, I think CADF have gone, you know what, screw, <laughs> screw the UCI. Um, this isn't this is going to get this is not going to go anywhere N nothing's going to come of this report so we're going to make sure that Jakob Fulsang gets punished by tribal media and give excerpts of this report or this report to Danish media and I think that's bullshit like why like whether you think Jakob Fulsang is doping or not um I don't think it's appropriate I think I think it just makes it more of a circus to have doping allegations being sort of excerpts of a report being put in in the media i think publish the report if you if you stand behind it and if you don't then you probably shouldn't be saying anything and if i was a starter 
or Yaka Fulsang, I would probably sue the CADF. Um, like, I'm not sure where they are, are, like, are entitled to be leaking parts of a report to the media. I'd probably sue CADF and think about suing Politican, is what I would do if I was him, like, immediately. Um, but let me catch up on your comments, what you said. Jake Foster says, Yakub Fulsang has to hit back with a full defamation case at this point. I agree. Saxy one player says, I'm not saying Ferrari is guilty of everything they're trying to show, but he is a very good liar. Aaron Moffat, when did Ferrari work with Astana? 2010, how he worked with uh, Vinokuro for ages, etc. <sighs> Simmons says, have you seen the performance metrics Velofax posted on Twitter of Fulsang? Uh, no, I haven't. But I'm going to look at his pro cycling stats now. Simon Mayer says, why sue Politiken? Because they published they published excerpts of the report and they didn't, like the DR article, Danish radio article, also included the conclusion of the report, which said that the report decided that there was no conclusive link between Fulsang and Ferrari. Okay, but let's have a <clears throat> let's have a quick look at Jakob Fulsang's pro cycling stats. I've just spoken for twenty minutes about CADF, etc. I mean, if you want to go in, if you really, if you ever want to understand how things are happening, you got to go into organisations' governance structures. You got to go into their annual reports, see what they're doing, see who who's who in the zoo. Um, like I've read their business their report from nineteen twenty. It says how many samples they collect, etc. Just go and read that if you're, if you're interested. But let's have a look at Jakob Fulsang's results from 2019. Now, maybe I'm naive. Maybe I am naive. But I don't know. I, I, I feel like, and I've been saying this for years, right? I've said this for a long time that Jakob Fulsang is like, Richie Port is the homeless version of Jakob Fulsang. Jakob Fulsang is not a Grand Tour rider. Never been suited to a three-week race. He's too tall and not a good enough time trialist. He is a one-day Ardennes Liège rider and a one-week stage race rider. And I think that's been clear from like 2012 and it really frustrated me that he and Dan Martin tried to put a square peg in a round hole and try to win the Tour de France when I just... You know, they, they just they would come eight for whatever in the Tour de France. A waste of time, in my opinion. When you got the talent to be doing other things, you'll also note that Jakob Fulsang, like he's thirty four. He's not that old. Also, what else was I going to say? Like he won Liège last year, and he came second in Fletcher. I mean, yeah, his results last year, Jesus, they are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, I forgot. If, man, he came. He did pretty good last year. Ooh. It's flying. <laughs> it's flying in those one day races. Fuck. Okay, well, I just, uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> one vote to Andalusia, second in Strada Bianca. Did uh, Alaphilippe beat him in that, or was there another race? Third in Amstel Gold, second in Fletcher, first in Liege, Baston Liege, first in Criterium de Dauphine. Didn't finish tour. Won a stage of La Vuelta and top 10, fourth in Lombardia. So not a bad little season, you know. It's not a bad season by any means. Probably winning a lot more races. The thing is, Jakob Fulsang didn't win a lot of races. He, he performed really well in a lot of races before. So he's obviously, it's a big race improvement, but he, you, you don't know whether like, like is he just getting better at racing? Is he just focusing on the right things and not really focusing on the tour? It's hard to say without seeing his watts, his his power data or heart rate data. Now, interestingly, someone shared on Twitter that Alexei Lutsenko, Alexei Lutsenko, um, oh, voice crack, stopped sharing his power data at the start of 2019, his heart rate data. So that seems to coincide with when, apparently, according to the Politican article, he got in contact with Michaela Ferrari, but 
it, it is clear that Full Sang's 2019 season was completely off chops, and he's the third best top three rider in the world right now, and won a monument, and oh, he also came third in Torino. So that's, I guess, where the alarm bells are. Yeah, I'm not talking about his height. I'm talking about like his height, uh, weight, and he's not that great at TT compared to those guys. Is is? I mean, and you remember Jakob Fulsang said the reason for his big big improvement in performance was that he ate more carbohydrate. So I think we're now seeing proof that carbohydrate is more potent than EPO. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Let me get back to your questions quickly. Santiago Benitez says, did anyone think that Jakob Fulsang's 2019 performances were even slightly suspicious compared to his career up to then? I think some people did. Daniel Kelly, how tall was Froome? Yeah, I mean their height and their ability to time trial compared to Fulsang. Russ Trotter, the key issue in my opinion is always the plausible deniability all the riders have. Does it even have to be a rider that contacts Ferrari if you know a guy who knows a guy who contacts him? Absolute cycling. I think Full Sang was on the, on for a podium in last year's tour. He was cool, calm, and collected for the crash. Nah, I don't think he's. Nah, I don't think he's gonna. Um, he's a tour rider. I think he's better one week guy on one day monument Arden guy. Selchuk Erhan. But even when it's true about Astana and Full Sang, if it, yeah, exactly. To me, it's more interesting that. To me, it's much more interesting that there is a, a clear breakdown. There, the relationship between C, CADF and the UCI is fucked. Obviously, like for them to be leaking a report like this, it just this is the anti-doping process just seems to be a complete circus. Like, how can you have faith in the process if you've got people leaking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like. River, what do you think of his ex-doctor's com comments? I describe my ideas about a scientifically based training diet and so on, but the team chose another direction. I don't know. I don't know. Through Axel, through Axel Wolf, will you talk about Lutsen Lutsenko too? Danish media is obviously focusing on full saying, but Lutsenko is a very prominent rider too. Saxy one player, does this ruin your chance of scoring an interview with Ferrari anytime soon? No, I don't think so. Like, 5312 is... Uh, 5312 is a pretty solid website. I, re I read it all the time. But anyway, I want to go back to, and this is this is where I, I think my biggest concern with the validity of the report is, right? The report says that Ferrari attended a race with Astana. That would be the most stupid thing. Like, whatever you think, maybe you're full saying stupid. Maybe Astana are brazen. Okay, the Ferrari, for whatever you think of him, he's not an idiot. <laughs> he's not an idiot. If you, you cannot employ Ferrari as a consultant if you're a cycling team, you will get a two-year ban if you employ him as a consultant. So do we really think it's realistically, realistic that Astana would invite him to a, to a race or he'd come to a race with Astana in person where everyone, all the old people in cycling would immediately recognize him? And if he did come, and people recognise him. No one from any other teams would mention it. That just seems just outrageous, like very far fetched to me. Like it's very far fetched. And similarly with Nice and Monaco. Nice and Monaco is legit where almost every cyclist lives, apart from Girona or Andorra. And he's going to do a motor pacing session with Jakob Fulsang in Nice or Monaco. It just seems like why would he do that? Like you don't, he doesn't need to be that hands on. If he's doping an athlete, he he's not stupid. He, he doesn't need to be, you know, <laughs> on uh, Colza on the Madone climb, <laughs> doing with the stopwatch. Like he's not an idiot. So what? Like that just seems, unless they just thought they can be as brazen as they like. But I just I don't know how that is that is believable. I mean sometimes. The truth is stranger than fiction, but I saw that. I saw when I saw that in the Politic and article. I just it, it it just seems incredible to me, and I think the truth is somewhere away from that. Basically, um, Alex Hazard says people saying that Fulsang has only been good last year. You guys haven't watched cycling for the last couple of years. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I thought Full Sang had more in the tank. Um, yeah. Like, I just think he didn't get the results, but I think... He, I, I just You need to see his what's, what's data, you know, his power data, and his blood work to really understand whether, you know, to really see if there's an improvement in performance. I mean, the way he went in the Ardennes, there must have been an improvement in performance, though. What, where's your... What's your... What's the current ratio of clean versus doping riders in the pro peloton? George Pridler was on a full EPO blood bag program or blood bag program with Dr. Schmidt, the German doping doctor. And he was finishing 20 minutes down on zero stages on other riders. Had you heard of George Pridler before he got banned? So you got it. So you need to know, okay? So <laughs> all you need to know. For River, what are the chances of even recognizing Ferrari on a motorbike with a helmet on? I don't know. It just seems ridiculous. That just seems crazy last year. Uh, crazy to me. Alex Hazard probably a lot more dopers in amateurs than pro level. <laughs> don't think so. Jake, there's a great short video on YouTube of Ferrari himself riding up the Monzuno climb near Bologna. Ronnie Gordon, he's not stupid, he's not an idiot. In Hamilton's book, the view is that the docs who don't make it as a decent doc become doping docs. Easy money. Nah, Ferrari's not stupid, man. Ferrari, like, introduced... He's responsible for, like, half the training methods that predominate cycling now. Like, he's not stupid. You know, whatever you think of him. If you want to join the channel and support the channel, if you've liked this stream so far, consider joining channel membership. As you can see from Roland Shoemaker, you can use your doping syringes and emojis if that's if you want to use that. Holderbert says, oh, there's a lot of questions, guys, so consider using Super Chat as well. I'm not going to get through all of these questions. Holderbert says, with how much money is supposedly involved with getting trained by Ferrari, it would be dumb not to get henchmen to do the physical test. Exactly. Like, this is big money. Like, they're not paying him 50 bucks a week for you. There's not some Training Peaks Platinum service <laughs> on Training Peaks paying 150 a month. This is like, paying like big money. I'm talking like 10K euro a month, 8K euro a month if you're on a Ferrari program, which I don't think, doesn't look like full saying is based on the evidence here. Aaron SB. This is the insidious harm of doping. People can and should be able to find form in their 30s. Anyone who tries and works hard to improve or changes their regimen a bunch is now by default suspect. Yeah, I mean, if people think Full Sang's improvement in performance is, is crazy, I, I want you to have a look at this. I want you to have a look at this. If you think, <laughs> it always makes me laugh, you know, that it's never, <laughs> if you think Full Sang's improvement in performance is wild, I want you to have, <laughs> Tell me, comment, comment down below. Who, who is this? Who's the pro cycling stats? Whose pro cycling stats is this? Forty seventh in Tour de Suisse, forty fifth in Brixia Tour, eighty fifth Tour de Polonia, in the middle of August. <laughs> First in Vuelta. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I'll stop there. <laughs> Jesus. Well, that's my humor for the day. Ryan Sharp, you fair Twitter put up a CQ rating chart. Don't know the metric, but showed a huge increase in 2019. I don't know what CQ is. Is that performance? Is that his results? Um, but yeah, that was... Yeah, it does look like full, full saying improved a lot. Lawrence Brundle says, what's crazy is the body fat percentage of Lutsenko. That guy is veiny as AF. River says, even if Full Sun did use EPO, it's only as bad as orange juice. Deception says, 13-year-olds are using drugs for under-14 county championships. Lumens Lumens says, when Belgian riders got quiet when asked about a stunner, I knew. Like, I think now... I mean, what do you guys think? I think now we're like so jaded that we we just don't care. Like, I'm more, I don't care really, honestly. I, I I'm more interested in like how the organ why are the organisations doing certain things, etc. Um, like why why are they why are certain things happening? Why are reports getting leaked? 
rather than being published through the, the correct channels. Whether people are doping or not, I mean, you, know, you probably know my view on that right now. Thomas Richards, for me, I think such a hard aspect is how Astana and Full Sang respond. If they start suing and saying extraordinary allegations require extraordinary evidence, how will it look? Nah, they should definitely sue them. They should. They should sue them. Demandred Michaela Ferrari's son is apparently involved and works for his father. Yeah. If, you, if you've watched Icarus, etc., you'll know. Like, I think all you guys that follow the channel, I think a lot of people now, we, we, we've learned from Lance. You know, the few the people that did believe, I think you're... I think we, we're, we're a bit more jaded now and our eyes are a bit more open. Um... Bad vegan, I care. That's why I like women's racing. It's more real. I can believe in it. They just got two women got popped. Did that Belgian Belgian chick just get popped for test? No, nah, like it's just sport, man. Like it's just it's just sport. It's just a circus. Like see that weightlifting documentary, the German weightlifting documentary. Apparently, and the guys resigned. The head of the International Weightlifting Federate Federation. If you tested positive, you gotta pay. <laughs> you gotta pay him into a bank account that no one had access to except him. Like, Hambini, I can now say that various cycling teams have approached me to fit mag drive bottom, bottom brackets. Cheating is rife. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> this is why you joined the Lantern Rouge live stream. We've nearly got 800 in the chat. Hold on, Hambini. Now, is, are, you, are you trolling me, Hambini? Hambini, I can now say that various cycling teams, I don't know what that means though, in bracket, in, have approached me to fit mag drive bottom brackets. Cheating is rife. Wow, that's crazy, man. I mean, I don't know if that's world tour or whatever, but Jesus. There's so many questions, guys. You're gonna have to use use the super chats. I can't get get through them through them all. Colin Hilson, well, can you sue even if it's true? Yeah, you, well, no. The burden is not on Full Sank to prove that it's not true. The burden is on uh, CADF to like proofs, like show the the reason they had to leak this report and why they did that. Like, yeah, that it's not about whether it's true or not. Hambini says I don't troll. Okay. Daniel Longworth, is anybody shocked that someone from Team Astana is linked to a world-renowned doping? Do um, well, like, look at Quick Steps doctors, man. Ibaguren, whatever, like, all of them, like. <laughs> just, yeah. Lawrence Brandle, will modern day cycling get into another crisis? I don't think so. So, right, I think we're at a point where, I think we're at a point where the UCI, if I was the, you know, if, if you're the UCI, you realise we can't do Lance 2.0. We, we, we can't do this, really. Like, we can't be going down that path. Sponsorship in cycling is the majority of the revenue for teams. And sponsors are very, very nervous about doping scandals. And I think sponsors, like, we're getting, we're getting down to, like, you know, lower-tier sponsors that have less scruples about sponsoring cycling. And for you... I don't think the UCI, like if I was the UCI, I wouldn't want a massive scandal. It could, you know, that would destroy cycling again. The sport's already kind of a joke. And if you don't know as well, I forgot to mention that uh, CADF is actually funded by, so this is, if you want to look into the funding of the CADF, let's see. They get quite a lot of money, actually. I, I encourage you to read this report. So each UCI World Tour team, this is old numbers, I think it's 133 now, but each World Tour team has to give them about 130,000 euro pay up in four installments. Pro Conti, 86 or 88,000 euro. And if they don't contribute to the CADF, so they're a funder, they're a stakeholder. Astana are a stakeholder in CADF and they, they contribute it to its funding and they, and they just leak this report screwing them. Um, but if they don't pay, they get excluded from the World Tour, basically. And also, this is now 17.7%, I think. Each World Tour race has to give them 
like 17% of the minimum prize money as a contribution as well. So that's the, I think this is to, to fund the biological passport. And I mean, the biological passport, everyone's like, oh, well, that's the, that's the reason why smoking, uh, smoking, that's the smoking gun or the reason why cycling is uh, super clean right now. Lawrence Brandle, welcome to the Lantern Rouge squad. But who has ever been prosecuted from biological passport alone? Remember Roman Kreuziger? Remember with Roman Kreuziger what happened with the um, with his biological passport data? I don't think anyone's been. I mean, I've seen off scores of we, you know, I've seen off scores of some riders, a British rider, and like the off scores, they're crazy, insane spikes, and <laughs> nothing happened. Um, so. I think the biological passport is very, very difficult. The biological passport is better as an in indicator of who may be doping, but then you still need, yeah, you still need to actually, to ever, to ever get popped for doping, it's never a positive test. So someone comment when the last positive test popped a big guy. It's always police, police raiding David Miller, finding EPO syringes or whatever back in the 2000s. Oh, it's only that one time. It's only that one time. <laughs> Police, police with Dr. Schmidt, the German doping ring, the Adelaide doping ring, was someone just mentioned in the chat, Lawrence Brandl. Apparently there's a big name in Germany, big name in Germany who's going to come out of that. Till Krischer, welcome to the Lantern Rouge squad, thanks for the support. Um, Puerto, police investigation, and then, like, they, yeah. So it's always police investigations that find things out, right? It's not doping tests. Passing doping tests, honestly, as shown by Icarus, passing like micro dosing, micro doping, just gonna be real. It's an IQ test, it's not difficult. Okay, like micro doping, it's not gonna get picked up by the biological passport if you got money. Like, if you can. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, they got Froome's adverse analytical finding, and then what happened? <laughs> Did you get suspended? No. So even if the biological passport does find shit, and that, that wasn't a biological passport, that was a uh, excess levels of salbutamol in his urine, that, that AAF. And then what happened? Nothing. Cycling Pulse says, is that Angela Merkel? But yeah, if you... Okay, I've got to get ready for work. We've got 10 minutes left. Feed me through any chats or super chats if you want want your questions answered. Um, what would you like to see me cover in the later weeks? We've got we had eight hundred in the in the stream. This is crazy. I mean, what Lenberg mentioned, what Froome did is he proved that uh, we and again we've never seen the report because transparency, right? Like there's never any transparency about what is happening, and it's incredibly frustrating. Like I just want to read the CADF report so I can see what they fucking what they're saying instead of seeing it in a, in a Danish paper. Like I don't care. If someone's doping or not, I just I would like to res like read the report, and I think you owe it to the athlete, the team, the cycling fans to publish the report. Anyway, it's just what I think. Froome proved that in can or proved to a reasonable level, I think that he uh, the level of salbutamol could have been explained by severe dehydration and only taking like four sprays on his asthma puffer, two thousand milligrams in his urine. Uh, much more, and which is more than I think some of the other riders, the Italian rider that got a two-year ban for salbutamol. So there you go. GA McKinney, did they reply to your email? No, to, to at the moment I haven't had haven't got a reply from um, CADF to my email, which is a shame. I'm a lawyer, which is good. Aurelian Adwi, I think someone messed up in internal. No, I don't think. I don't think they messed up CADF. I think they made a dis conscious decision to do this, and they made a conscious decision decision to leak this to, yeah, to the media. What are my thoughts on ketone esters? I don't really know. I know that Yumbo is going to take that ketone stuff. Um, yeah, Dan Roy, without the biopassport, Cyprus would get more flagrant. Yeah, probably. It's probably safer for them that they have the biopassport to like limit going too crazy with it. Chris Jackson, maybe a video on Stipikov. Seems like he could be an interesting GC rider if he can drop some of the baby fat. Maybe. 
Welcome, William Marshall. Welcome. And guys, if you want to support the channel, consider a super chat or joining the channel membership so I can go off chops on things like this. If you want to, if you want to listen to the best podcast possible, Lawrence Brandle just mentioned it. Go to listen to the Fast Ski and Nordic podcast, and listen to the podcast with Carol Tamyav, the Estonian, I think, uh, cross country skier who got done for doping in the Ad- or is allegedly allegedly doping with the Adlas with Dr. Mark Schmidt. Very candid interview, and. Yeah, he just basically lays lays bare how he did it, etc. That is, if you want to, that is probably the best podcast to listen to, and explains a lot. And you'll be surprised how candid he is. Hold on, hold on one second. Legit, I actually do have asthma. I do have asthma. Don't don't get mad. Someone's probably going to make a meme of that saying, <laughs> "Is Lantern Rouge salbutamol doping?" <laughs> Maybe. Have I got a TUE for that? I don't. I'm sorry, but we'll <laughs> thank you, Car- Case Farley, in for a tenor. Good chat. Really appreciate the support. Re- Case has been following the channel for ages. What did you guys? So, what do you guys think about the full saying thing? I haven't really. Do you guys think it's appropriate the way it's played out? Hey Shane Miller, um, <laughs> like, do you, how do you think it should have happened? Are you disappointed? Where are you at with your belief in cycling right now? Do you really like? Do you have much faith in anti-doping, etc.? <laughs> Vito Land ninety two, we got him. Yes, someone make a lantern rouge inhaler emoji. I only took two puffs. Apparently, under a TU, I can take way more. So. Don't at me. <laughs> can I get banned from YouTube? Can Wada ban me from YouTube if I take too much salbutamol? Jesus. I'm worried about this. My coffee's getting cold. <laughs> Malandrix, how did you manage to get Froome on? Nah, Chris Froome's clean. Chris Froome's clean rider. He got... He's 100% clean. Aaron Hammonds, he should be punished if he really did it, and it's Astana, so they probably did. That's the problem is that people assume that Astana, you know, are more dirty than other teams because of their reputation, etc. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I 100% agree with it. On the more, Michael Rasmussen wants to do a podcast where he mentioned his famous da- doping, etc. Tom Vonk, welcome to the Lantern Rouge Squad. Yeah, remember Cameron Jeff has got a six month ban from British Cycling on the road. For using a Tron bike. <laughs> and British Cycling had testosterone sent to their headquarters and <laughs> no one's got banned or lost their job for it. <laughs> oh, exactly, British Cycling, man. GP Lama, YouTube takes care of banning YouTubers for no real reason. Yeah, I agree with that. Sergio Cristancho, let's check what's in that coffee. Exactly, you don't know what's in my coffee. How do you think I, my work right? I put up that egg and banana video five hours ago. You know how tired I am? Ronan Hegarty, has Full Sang not been getting around for years before this and getting good results? I think uh, we're going to click off this lad. <laughs> uh, full Sang. I think the problem with Full Sang is that he just started, he didn't actually win a lot of races, and I know this because I was. I wanted to make a video looking at Jakob Fulsang and, and his, some of his races, etc. But he didn't win a lot of races before 2019. And then he just like second in Strade, first in Liège, second podiums in Fletcher and Amstel Gold. Those were, it's clearly his best run of races for in his career. So that's why I think some people think, yeah, there are alarm bells, right? Alex Hazard, if everyone was dope, someone would say it to the rest of the world. Um, no, they wouldn't. That's how a, that's how a murder works. The domestics get taken care of. The soigneurs generally get taken care of. Bjarne Rees made sure that he employed the soigneur from back in the day immediately um, at NTT. So it's all the same doctors, etc. Jake, getting popped by water is the equivalent of a full YouTube demonetization. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right, last five minutes, everybody, before I got to go to work. My real job is not my real job. Jakob Fulsang won Dauphiné in 2018 as well. Welcome, Case, is a lantern lieutenant. Thank you for your support. 
Full saying sprints like a snail. That's always been a problem with him. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think his problem is just, yeah, he didn't win a lot of races, but I think he was always there. I don't know. Maybe maybe Shane Miller, like, got his cleat angle right. Shane Miller, like, got him on the turbo, did some Zwift workout sessions, and after he did that with Shane Miller, he was, like, ready to crush the Ardennes. So it could have been that. could have been that. How am I still awake? Have I slept? Yeah, I've got five hours, Perry. I've got five hours. River, the most concerning thing to me is cyclists not cooperating with CADF. I agree. I think, yeah, so many cyclists, like, CADF have clearly approached people for a comment and no one's, uh, no one's responded. All right. Thank you for your support, everybody. I really enjoyed this live stream. I hope you found it informative. Um, I enjoyed it. We did a full hour. We had 800 in the chat. Pretty wild. Thank you, everybody. Doing more videos. Probably won't be doing any more doping videos. And um, because people don't really like them. They don't like the truth. I've got to go to work. I've run out of ideas. I'm really, really overwhelmed by all the support for the channel. Um, particularly from Case and everybody. Just really, just yeah, overwhelmed by the support for the channel. feel a bit bad for Jakob Fulsang and Astana, and I wish the ADF would publish a report. See you later.